you know, the weird thing be say, you go feed day your house, eh, then you go hear say, gunshots, they happen for around. You go hear them. The, maybe, I mean, you know, say, X months they cancel, sometimes you go figure say, it be, it be December, boys, they, I mean, small boys, they throw no counts, then things. But, Charlie, that's not been the case in Accra. And the issue with regards to other Bakra shooting has been, um, I don't know. It's 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 quite unusual. I mean, I mean, it's 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 sad that we have to actually get used to the fact that Ghana is gradually turning into a blockbuster scene. I don't know whether there is a Hollywood movie that's being staged here in Accra, especially uh, not specifically in Accra, but because we have had incidences. I mean, earlier this um, year we saw some people, some gold um, shop in. Uh, Western region being robbed and the same, I mean, they use the same technique and robbers go in there shooting people around and stuff. So, I I don't know what's happening, but I think things are really changing in, in a negative context and we have to find ways to resolve it. So, what is really the issue with regards to the Adabraka shooting? Now, <clears throat> So it's it's more like um, Dabraka is a suburb of Accra. It's quite close to Seco, and that place is very close to town. So um, even for the robbers to actually have the guts to actually do that, pull that off, is something that personally sometimes uh, when I saw the video I was like, wow. I mean, what's what's Ghana turning into? What's Accra turning into? Because um, from sources of what we've gathered to it's real we realized that there was um, even a, a, a police station close to where they did the robbery and it's it's it even makes the whole thing a bit daring I, mean, I don't know whether it's money he's thing that's happening in Accra or whether some of these movies that um, we've been watching some of these series has really been having a toll on our mindset but um, I mean, the good part of this whole thing is nobody was shot at the end of the day. I mean, no life was lost. But that doesn't take away the fact that this is a very, very bad act that we should criticize as a nation. Now, the shop involved, okay, some people are saying it's a gold shop. Some people are saying it's a jewelry shop. But, I mean, if it's a gold shop, it probably can be a jewelry shop because it'd be a, they sell jewelry uh, in, in, I mean, gold jewelries and stuff. So probably people, others don't know um, the difference between maybe it being a gold shop and a jewelry shop. Or it's more or less like they have a section of the shop that sells gold and another section that's, that's the jewelry selling. So it's it's it was like some people went to this place and then they came out with sacks that was that is assumed to be money now why am i saying assumed because some of the ro the robbers actually threw money in the air at some point we didn't know where the money came from we didn't know whether it was just a plot to sort of um um maybe conceal certain things but from where we are standing we saw the robbers throwing money in the air so we presumed that the bag was full of money now these were huge bags that was not even like small bags, like huge, huge bags. So I'm wondering if that bag was truly full of money. That's a lot of money there. And these people actually went there. And so there's a footage that came out and realized that there were actually like is it two or three people that were coming out from um, a saloon car that was red. And then they were moving from the shop. Okay. And when they moved front, when they moved a little bit um, away from the shop, they met these robbers. And the robbers uh moved moved close to them and they blocked them with their car and then they came out and they started shooting now people are thinking that there is an inside job personally if you ask me i think obviously it should be an inside job because some people some person might have been there or some inform me there's an informant there that actually informed the robbers on even when these people will be leaving the place so there might be somebody there, there, there should be somebody there that I inform the robbers that, okay, hey, look, the people will leave the place at this time, so you should be at this checkpoint and then block the road and block, they do this, all these kind of stuff. So I think the police are going to do the investigation, so that part of the conversation is something that I should leave it to the police. I should, we should trust them with it to actually do the right job since it's their field. So um, the whole problem is now the shooting, the whole 
area because the whole thing was being there was a lot of gunshots around people were just standing around people were not some of them were even very nonchalant about the whole situation and that's even the most um i don't know whether people are getting used to these situations in accra but i saw uh an orange seller that was actually passing casually whilst the whole shooting was going around i, I really don't know why she decided to i mean sort of like i don't know why she decided to put her life in that kind of risk but i mean uh, maybe she's just used to these kind of incidents in Accra, and so she saw it one, as one of those things. But most of the people in the area were indoors because they were shooting and throwing gunshots around. So nobody was um, brave enough to actually go and help the situation, which was very understandable because Charlie, <laughs> life, Charlie, as much they come to me, but yeah. So after they left is when everybody came out to actually, um, you know how Ghanaians we are, um really ask more about the situation and everything but this is uh, an issue that um should be looked at in terms of security for our nation as a, uh, i mean because look at these young men they, they are young men because when you look into the cctv cameras these are young men that were actually um trying to i don't know what they were actually trying to achieve with these kind of stunts that they are doing but it's more or less like the same old thing and trying to find some some easy way to make money now somebody might argue that it's because of how the country is and how the economic situation is in ghana but in if you say that way to i mean there are other countries that are also they also have armed robbers that are, might not even be in that kind of economic space like ghana are but these people also have these people these vices in their society so some of these things i believe that as a country is growing as um, a community is growing we you will always have these vices and some of these people in the community and i believe that it's one of those things with regards to the issues of like things that really happens as a community or a country is growing and people are coming into the country all sort of people and all manner of people with different manner and manners and different perception of life will come into the scene and so for that one i feel it's just the things of nature playing out. So what we have to do is how are we going to beef our security system to make sure Ghana as a country is not going to have issues with our security because these are people um, that are also fat. I mean, imagine working that hard to amass that amount of money in Ghana. If, I mean, like it's alleged that, that those bags were full of money, like they are saying, but working that hard to amass that level of wealth and somebody will just use a few minutes to steal it away from you i mean that's 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 hell that's that's traumatic in every sense that you look at it but <laughs> charlie we should find a way to beef our security system because these things are becoming a regular occurrence and it, it's it's problematic because it's like there is no fear now to do certain things the last time uh, we had an issue of, I mean, this um, cars that carry uh, bank notes, um, carry money to different banks, were was robbed, and the drivers of the car was were shot. These issues are popping up, and people are becoming more brave with their vices, and it's something that we should put an end to it. Because, look, <laughs> sometimes they don't just take the money; they kill people, they hurt people, and they injure people. So it's not something I feel like we should. Um, condone as a country but in other way too, I feel like uh, maybe sometimes too you can also blame it a little bit on the fact that this country has become a bit difficult to live in with regards to um, how to earn a living and how the inflation and the living standard consistently increases in this country so it's 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 it has become difficult for young men and women to find legitimate ways to actually make money which is not in any way it it doesn't in any way condone or actually it makes makes this kind of legal illegal act i mean it, it doesn't justify it in any way because i mean a lot of people are going through the same thing and are finding legit and a good way to make money some people are even doing a very good job and they are not being paid right and they are not uh, finding this illegal illegal means to actually make money so I mean, we should all find a way to make sure that at least we live in a society whereby uh, some of these things are not really a regular occurrence. But because if it's a regular occurrence, 
it is a huge problem. So with regards to the Adabaka shooting, Charlie, personally, I think that it's something that the police uh, should do something about it. But talking about the police, the police has released a statement on their official account on X to actually um, confirm that they are on a manhunt um, for these guys that were actually involved in the accident. So let me read that one quick. This is from Ghana Police Service, and it says, Police on a manhunt for armed robbers who attacked a jewelry shop at Adabaka in Accra. So it was it was actually a jewelry shop because you know, Ghana Police Service, I'm sure, have done their um, thorough investigation into the issue. So it wasn't a gold shop like many are saying. It was a jewelry shop. So they go on to say the police are on a manhunt for a gang of armed robbers who attacked a jewelry shop at Adabaka in Accra on Saturday, 2nd November 2024, where one person was injured. We would like to assure the public that we will surely get them and bring them to face justice. Okay, so, I mean, with the credibility that Ghana Police Service has built over some um, few years now, I believe that these things are, personally, I trust them to actually do their job because they've been cases that um, it has happened this way and, I mean, we will be there and they will find their means. I don't know how they do it, but they get a job done and they will find a way to actually arrest these people. So with this one, I believe that we will trust Ghana police to actually bring book to book the perpetrators of this uh, robbery. And we are looking forward to that, Charlie. Some of these things, you know, you know fine, bro. It, it's not nice. We, sh we, we can do better as a youth. We, we, we should find more. And I, I know it's difficult to... Um, and 11. It's, it's almost impossible to actually uh, sustain yourself in Accra um, with some amount of salary and some amount of money if you are not looking out for other means to um, get money. But Charlie, this is not, this is not it. Charlie, this is not it. We should, this is from it. At, but I mean, we, no, it's not cool, bro. It's not cool. We, we, should, we should just try and make life a little bit easier for all of us. But that doesn't mean that we should find these means to make issues. I mean, look at uh, the people even living in the area, the people living in that community, the trauma involved. I mean, living, staying indoors and hearing somebody shooting a gun. Uh, right now, if they did their cry, they hear somebody say they didn't throw knockout cry. Your, 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 your heart all go cut. Knockout go sound like gun to you. And Charlie is, is not cool, but it's not cool. And from the information I've gathered, it seems that they they didn't even know the routes to the place. The, the robbers didn't really know Adabaka really well, so they were struggling to actually escape the environment. And the funny part is that there's a police station there, so I don't know how they were able to actually go away. Because if they didn't know the Adabaka route and there was a police station there, I believe that the police will be used to the route of, of the whole the entire area. So I, I don't know whether... During the time that they shot the place, they were shooting the gun and the, the gun shot. I don't know whether the police didn't hear or somebody didn't alert them. But um, I feel maybe if the police were a bit fast, maybe they would be able to sort of um, deal with them in the right way. But maybe the, the, there's other there are levels to how everything happened. And maybe um, they had their own way to actually maneuver and then get away with it. But that's not the first time. Um, that particular shop has been robbed. I learned it was robbed before and the owner has to invest in security and then beef up the place. But this time around, the people didn't go inside the jewelry shop to rob the place. They actually met them outside. So it means the first time the jewelry shop owner actually beefed up the place, the security of the place to sort of prevent the robbery. But this time around, they targeted the place and then they met them outside. So it's more or less like maybe it's from how it is, Charlie, it could be like inside job. Yeah, because it's not the first time. Then it means that maybe somebody has been giving tip of, of how things are run in that particular shop. And um, I think the owner and the police should do a very good job and to sort of um, scan through the environment and then scan through the employees to see whether they will find someone that is uh, probably going to be implicated in this situation. Because this looks more like an inside job. So that's what's happening with regards to uh, the Adabraka shooting and Robbie. Personally, Charlie, there's x mas coming. x mas when x mas is coming like that, Charlie, can't was hot because people are finding means to actually uh, make money to celebrate their x mas And then this, to top it, this trip, 
there is also election happening in Ghana in December. So it's a very tense situation, it's a very hot um, situation in Accra, especially because it's the capital of Ghana. So if you're out there in Accra and then Charlie, you are doing your stuff, you are doing your runs, you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that your security, your personal security, first of all, is very well um, important to you because Charlie, we did the hot season, you bab. In a, and also Charlie, let's let's try our best to actually uh, be our brother's keeper. When you see something in your area that is unusual, that is uh, something that doesn't really sit well with you, uh, you should do well to probably inform the police about it and make sure that at least some of these things can be prevented earlier on and for us to actually find a cure uh, for it. So with that one said, I'll end today's edition of Trent. On KDM, yeah, my name remains Donald, not Trump. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.